This is Michael Spedden, and welcome to Foul Players Radio, your one-stop shop for all of your pop culture needs. We feature interviews from musicians, actors, comics, dancers, authors, and much, much more, up-and-coming artists and beloved favorites. We've got it all, people on stage, backstage, out front, and behind the scenes. Sit back and relax. Let's have some fun. Hi, this is A.D. Adams. And Paul Williams with Escape the Hive. You are listening to Foul Players Radio. Hi, this is Bud Becker. Hi, everybody. Dwight Weems from Gaz the Fun Band. Hi, folks. This is Jay David. Hey, this is Brian Damage from Kix and Rhino Bucket. Hi, this is Kim of Kim's Crypt. Hello, my name is Gunil Carling. Hi, this is Paul Castiglia, and you're listening to Foul Players Radio, the one-stop shop for all your pop culture needs. And welcome back to another episode of Foul Players Radio. My name is Michael Spedden, and we are in Season 11 of Foul Players Radio, and today's guest is Samantha Saragusa the daughter of the late Tony Siragusa, one of the most beloved Baltimore Ravens players. Samantha joins us to talk about Goose Flights, an organization dedicated to helping people in need, the seriously ill, active military veterans, or anybody else who needs their services with transportation, both by air and by ground, to receive medical treatment. The idea for this organization came to Tony Siragusa a number of years ago, when he was a partner with Titan Aviation, and his children have made it a reality after his untimely death several years ago. Guilford Hall Brewery has produced the beer called Goose Flights Lager, which is available at Guilford Hall Brewery, Glory Days Grill, and Costas Inn. Links to Goose Flights can be found in the show notes, and their website, you can find information about how to obtain their services if needed, and how to donate if you would like to help www.gooseflights.org. The Foul Players of Perryville are back in action and have upcoming shows on the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad, Fifth Company Brewing, Susky River Beverage Company, and Maryland Party Boat. If you're interested in seeing a show, our webpage is www.foulplayersofperryville.com. And if you are interested in booking us, foulplayersperryville at yahoo.com or 443-600-0446. Remember, every Tuesday from 4 to 6 p.m. is the back of the rack. The Michael Spedden Show on 97underground.com. We feature songs you forgot you liked, classics that never die, interviews with up-and-coming and classic beloved bands. Go to 97underground.com and download the free app today. Listen to us wherever you go. Also, our interviews are now being archived on YouTube. We have a YouTube page, youtube.com slash at 97 underground Michael Spedden. We thank you for watching and listening to Foul Players Radio. Our main website is foulplayersradio.com. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash at foulplayersradio. Remember to support our guests in their endeavors, links to their books, albums, tickets to their shows, and much more can be found in the show notes of each episode. We'll be right back after these words with Samantha Siragusa. Today, we have a very special guest. I mean, normally we're having bands in here to talk, but we took a little bit of a different path to talk to somebody who is um, a member of the family of one of the most beloved sports figures in Baltimore sports history here. Uh, her name is Sammy Siragusa, and uh, Sammy is joining us today to talk about Goose Flights Lager and the Goose Flights organization. Um, she, uh, Goose Flights Lager is made by Guilford Hall right here in Baltimore, Maryland. And um, Sammy is here to talk about the Goose Flights organization, how it helps people, and the beer itself, and a whole bunch of other great things. So, Sammy, welcome to Foul, uh, welcome to uh, the back of the rack. Good to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Great. So, um, very interesting news here. Um, You've partnered with uh, Guilford Hall uh, Brewery. Um, they're producing Goose Flights Lager, uh, you know, named after the Goose Flights organization that you run. Uh, tell us the history of this. Tell us how, um, where Goose Flights came from, what its purpose is, and uh, how it came to be, and what they're doing for people. Yes, I'd love to. So, um, a couple of months before my father's unexpected passing, he had this vision where he wanted to utilize his private jet charter company, Titan Aviation Group, 
to give back in a big way. And um, he wasn't able to fulfill his vision. He was working with the NFL alumni and um, was not able to fulfill his vision. And that's sort of where myself and my family came and stepped in and founded Goose Flights to, you know, continue on my dad's legacy. Yeah, that is, um, that, that's a very important thing that you're doing here. Um, you know, with all of the, uh, when people really have medical needs, you know, for example, you know, um, specialized care that may only be available maybe at Johns Hopkins or the Mayo Clinic or, you know, UCLA Medical Center or something, and you happen to live on the exact other side of the country, you know, not only getting there and being, you know, there's a lot of logistics involved in getting that care. Getting there is one yes. of them. Where are you going to stay and all those things? So, uh, how have you been doing with it? You know, have you been able to, um, you know, get a lot of people to the care that they need and where they need to go? Yes, that's a great question. So to put a little emphasis on, um, you know, our mission at Goose Flights, essentially what we do is non-emergency medical transportation. So we utilize jet charter and gr ground transportation to transport children, veterans, active duty military, or really anybody battling an illness to healthcare all over the country. Um, so we put a, a high emphasis on the jet charter and um, through the launch of the beer that you mentioned, Goose Flights, we've been able to actually um, get some Mar Baltimore, Maryland recipients and really help within within the communi community locally. Well, that's great. Now, that, that's really great. So, um, you know, you've been able to uh help people, you know, all over the place. Um, I believe you're based in, are you based in New Jersey? So we're actually based in Boca Raton, Florida. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. We're based there, but we operate nationally. And oh, okay. with every trip that we do, um, jet charter wise to help a family, we, I always will fly out there and make sure that um, I'm there with the family as they're going through um, the transportation process. So we're super hands-on, mm -hmm. um, which is a big part of, of this. Well, that's, that's great that you're offering people that level of service too. you know, somebody representing the company actually there when the services are going on, I could just imagine. And that way, you know, you're accountable, you know, you're showing the folks that you're accountable for everything and that, things are going to go as planned. You know, um, I could just imagine nothing worse, you know, not that this would happen with your company since you're so hands-on and making sure things do happen, but just, uh, yeah, where's the plane? Yeah. Where, you know, where's the van? Jeez, man, they were supposed right. to be here. <laughs> and, uh, right. so you're seeing to it. Yeah. Yeah. And we want to make sure that people really get a good experience. Um, you know, it's, it's very easy for with, you know, bigger organizations for, their recipients to get, you know, lost in translation or not really have that one-on-one -on -one support. So we mm -hmm. put a high emphasis on just making sure that we're there. You know, we will guide them through the whole process. You know, usually our recipients are are going through a lot medically and um, we, we want transportation to be the least of their concerns. And so that's where, you know, the jet charter comes in and plays a really big role in alleviating that stress and, and pressure of, of traveling, you know, more ways than one. I, I know. I mean, it's, it's just, it's a headache enough to plan a trip just to go on vacation or something that you're doing at your leisure, let alone having, you know, not only getting to your treatment, but, you know, where are you going to stay? worrying about the family member or you know, worrying about yourself being okay to get there and everything. So, I mean, this is really a huge part of the, um, you know, of um, uh, taking away, you know, really um, a big burden off of people's shoulders, making sure that they're getting there. I mean, I'm sure people are loving this. Right. And especially, you know, we've had recipients with compromised immune systems who, oh are able to travel commercial, like on commercial airlines. Um, so that's where private came into play really well. We had a, um, a recipient, our latest recipient actually based out of Baltimore, Maryland. Um, he has autism and mm. needed transportation to Maryland and he had never been on a flight before. Mm. And, um, you know, there are a lot of instances where, you know, children or people battling autism where they get kicked off of the airlines because, 
you know, they react under stress and sure, sure. Patients. And um, so we were really excited to come in and, you know, just help this family and, and transport um, our recipient to where he had to go for treatment. And I would imagine too, on a commercial airliner, you know, you've got, you know, I, I don't know how many people fit on there, 50 to a hundred people. Um, especially if somebody is really, it may have compromised immunity or something, you, you wouldn't want to put them in an environment where they have, you know, 50 to a hundred people, what percentage of them have COVID or the flu or anything, or even a cold that could really, um, you know, cause a problem for that person. And also too, I would imagine that with this being more of a private plane, that if caregivers needed to go with that person. Um, if they needed somebody to tend to maybe equipment that they were dependent on or supposed to be there to give them injections or medicine or something, uh, I would imagine that this environment makes facilitates that, makes that a lot easier for people. Yes, yes, it it really does um, in more ways than one. And, you know, we, we even had a recipient who he was 17. And he had to get half of his pelvis and his entire leg amputated. Oh my uh, goodness! From this cancer called osteosarcoma, and um, yeah. he was one of our recipients with a compromised immune system. But also, there were only five doctors in the country who could perform this surgery, so he wow. had to get the surgery out of state. Um, so that's where we were fortunate enough to come in. Goose Flights was and uh, transport him post surgery back home. Um, <clears throat> to uh, finish up the rest of his chemotherapy. Right, right. And I would imagine too, you know, I mean, somebody like that can't be bouncing around on a plane. I mean, you uh, you probably have the facilities to maybe uh, secure somebody in the place if they need to be secured while right. they're traveling as well. So, um, wow, it really sounds like you've got, you know, just a great idea going here for people. Thank um, you. Thank yeah. you. And we, another thing that we want to do too, is we, we understand there's a big gap, you know, in transportation, even just mm -hmm. short distances as well. So we also, um, we also do ground transportation for short distances. So we set up park services and make sure that nobody is limited to um, healthcare just because they don't have the means for transportation. Sure, sure. I mean, again, you know, this is just such a huge part of it that not a lot of people think about until, oh my God, well, how am I going to get there? You know, it's just, well, I mean, you've really, uh, it sounds like you've really fulfilled a, an important need for a lot of people here. And that's really great. Um, really great. And um, so um, you've been, um, you know, your, your father, um, you know, has been a partner with, you know, was a partner with, you know, Titan Aviation and you had this vision, um, you know, to really help people. And that, that's really, um, having watched him as a Baltimore Ravens fan, um, seemed like the kind of guy didn't have a big heart on the field, especially with guys like Rich Gannon in that playoff <laughs> game, but definitely had a heart. Remember the kind of environment where he came from to be willing, you know, to have a vision to, to even think of this, you know, how many people, a lot of people don't always have the thought to do something or to give something back. You know, um, a lot of people just like, how can I make this grow and grow and grow and grow, you know? You know, it, it really takes kind of a special person to really think, well, how can I use at least part of this for good for others? Right. And and that's, you know, that's how he lived his daily life. He had such a big heart. Maybe maybe on the field it was a different story because <laughs> game time was game time. Work time was work time. Mm -hmm. But when he lived his day-to-day -day life, he made it his one of his life missions to just give back and make people's days and make people smile and, and change lives, you know, and, you know, for, for all that he's accomplished in his life and all the success and that he's reached, it's a really special thing to know that, you know, somebody could have that big of a heart and mm -hmm. uh, give back in ways, in big ways like this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think one of the things, I mean, he was one of the most beloved sports figures that this city has seen, um, you know, Orioles and Colts. And then we've had other teams here too, but those are, you know, were the two big ones. And 
I could just tell. I mean, I re- I've read his book. I watched him play for the time he was here. And, um, you know, one thing, one thing that I remember from his book, and then I also read about this in the paper, got out of pit, signed with Indy, and, um, but, uh, and we won't say that today, okay, but uh, got out of pit, signed with the Colts, got a bonus, got a signing bonus check, and what did he do with it? He went to his friends, treated them to a night out at the corner bar. I mean, the it was a thousand dollar signing mm-hmm. bonus at right. the time, and he was like, "All right, you know what better way to celebrate with than with all the people that that he loved?" And he opened a tab at the bar, and they all just had a good night. Mm-hmm. And that and that shows you one thing about my dad. It relates it relates back to how he lived his life giving back. It was that the success that he reached in his life it was never just for him he wanted to bring others up with him even Mm -hmm. at the even at one of the most the highest moments of his life at that time signing with the colts from being a free agent Mm -hmm. took that and he went and he celebrated with his friends and he gave back to his friends and he and he was also um just from seeing him again was a lot like the people that we've grown to love, you know, watching, you know, the Baltimore Colts when I was a kid. And then when my father was a kid too, um, blue collar guys, you know, they worked jobs during the off season. They were not, you know, they didn't have the salaries back in the fifties and sixties to go all year on that. You know, they were working alongside, you know, regular folks at Bethlehem steel GM, Lever Brothers, Crown Cork, and Seal working jobs alongside them. They were, you know, at the bar at night with you. They were in the neighborhood. You know, their kids were going to school with your kids. Um, just neighbors and friends and just regular folks, you know. Now, granted, in the 40-some years since then, you know, we have this problem with some people being weird. and You do have to kind of isolate yourself a little bit, you know. But, um that seems like, you know, reading your dad's book, talking about where he grew up, the kind of people he grew up around, um, and just his general way he, you know, just the way he really kind of carried himself, being a funny guy and um, just a very down to earth, you know, blue collar roots guy. He really fit in well here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing about my dad is that he never forgot where he came from Uh and he grew up in a blue collar town in a blue collar family. His father worked three jobs to take care of their family of five. Uh And that was always something that my father admired. He admired his work work ethic and he respected the work that it took, Uh you know, during that time that his father, you know, showcased to him. And, you know, my dad, he didn't come from much, but, he knew what it was like to work your your way mm-hmm. from the bottom to the top. And like I said, he never forgot where he came from. Exactly. Exactly. And um another thing I like, you know, his book was hysterical. I can remember I was on a flight for where I was doing some business traveling and I bought his book and I was like, oh, I'm reading it and I'm laughing out loud during the flight. People around are looking at me like I was nuts. And I was like, I'm sorry, but this book is hilarious. And um, I mean, such great stories in there and everything, too. If you really, um, um, God, I'm drawing a blank on the title, but. Goose. Goose. Yeah, that, duh. Okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> right, right. Um, so I was, I see that you have, um, you're, you have two siblings, correct? And yeah. they're also involved in the company? Yes, yes. I have a, a brother and a sister, and um, they are are very well involved with Goose Flights. And, um, you know, I'm grateful to have their support during this as I'm, mm-hmm. you know, present, sort of hightailing it. Um, but, yeah, they are super supportive of it, of us fulfilling, you know, our dad's vision through this way. And then uh, my brother has a sort of a bigger role with uh, the other company, Titan Aviation Group. Uh-huh. So um, he's sort of stepped into my dad's shoes in running the company with my father's business partner. 
and um, just making a big impression in that way. So I'm super proud of him. And I know my dad would be for that as well. Oh, I'm sure he would. I'm, I'm sure he'd be proud of all of you. You know, I mean, that's just a, uh, again, it's just a wonderful thing that you're doing here. You know, it's, it's and, and you know, the one thing too, is that and I've always said this to people, um, you know, somebody's true legacy, you know, forget the football field, forget everything else, the family he leaves behind. And I think, you know, three of you doing this is probably the best reflection on him being willing to help people the way you are. And I mean, I could imagine your job cannot be easy. I mean, you know, you have people all over the country needing to get here and there. And I'm sure that not everything goes as expected, right? But yes. You, you know, you're you're in the trenches making things happen. Yes. One one thing that our dad taught us since we were young is A, don't be afraid to fail, but B, you know, you can always do what you can to overcome adversity. You're mm -hmm. always going to face adversity in your life, but you can you can go and you can attack it and you can overcome adversity. And there's been a lot of adversity that we face in oh, unexpectedly sure. facing him. And it turned our world up completely upside down. Um, so young but, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but, but we know that what he would want us to do is to keep going, keep going. This is definitely adversity in our life, but to keep going and give it a hundred percent and to enjoy life in the process. So everything we do every day, no matter the challenges, no matter the adversity that we face, we do it because of him. We do it for him. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, I'm sure he'd be very proud to see what you've accomplished so far and um, that you continue to do for people. Again, you know, just carrying on this vision, you know, um, something that's very uh, good hearted, something that's definitely needed. And you're really making a difference for a lot of people. Hey folks, we're going to take a quick pause for some messages and we'll be right back after these words. You're listening to Foul Players Radio. It's here. I am the Zeros. The latest and greatest brand new album from Sammy Sirius and the Zeros, everybody's favorite purple-headed heroes, with 11 great new original songs featuring I Am The Zeros. I Love You Honey. I love you, I love you, I love you cause you my honey. Granny Groupie. Matter of time. It's a matter of time, you know. And much, much more. Get your copy now at SammySerious.com or wherever you purchase music online. And we're back. Thanks for your patience. And now we'll return to our interview on Foul Players Radio. So, um, one, another thing I wanted to ask you here, and, um, I, I really, uh, was curious about this, um, you know, your father's job, you know, being an NFL player, I'm sure there was a lot of travel. Um, there was a lot of travel, you know, I know that, you know, he played for two different teams in two different cities and, um, was that what was life like for you during those years? I mean, was there a lot of traveling and moving around and that kind of thing, or what was it like? Right. So I was I was very young. Um, I was born in Indiana, <coughs> in nineteen ninety seven, and mm -hmm. uh, so I don't really remember the the years of the Colts, but um, I more so remember our time that we spent in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And uh, a little fun fact for you, right there, is my dad chose to play for the Ravens, I believe. Actually, I'm wrong. I'm thinking of something completely different. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Um, uh, the beauty of my dad playing with the Ravens was that family in New Jersey was only three hours away. Yes. So yes. Whenever we would have home games in Baltimore, whenever he would have home games, we would have 
so many trucks filled with people coming mm -hmm. to our house, coming to the games. And it was always a family affair, you know, who's cooking, who's preparing the night before, you know, and it was, it was so much fun. And there are so many stories of just, you know, our whole family coming together for, for the football games. So that was a lot of fun. One thing I remember is that he had a, he got an RV and it always said Goose's gang on the side of it. And he, um, I don't know if that was um, something he got, um, I guess, bought it locally or, you know, obtained it that that way. But I remember seeing the uh, the, the RV, like a big camper, it said Goose's Gang on the side. It was probably packed full of friends and relatives coming down for the games. Oh, yeah. You know, anywhere he went, he had to make his statement, you know, mm -hmm. and but also he loved to have people with him, especially his family. So he would bring as many people as he possibly could. He would fill up the entire tailgate area if he could. And and he did with with so many loved ones. And he had, he mm -hmm. just had so much great support all around him. I could tell that I could tell that by the amount of people that were there. And, you know, you know, tailgating here, interesting fact originated in Baltimore, by the way. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. Mm -hmm. it, that, Did that was it? a Baltimore tradition. Yes. And um, I know some people that did, you know, you know, hang around a little bit and, you know, near where, you know, your, uh, your, uh, your folks were tailgating and everything. And, um, Oh, just, just a delightful group, you know, and, um, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And yeah, you know, um, but I do remember the Goose's gang RVs, like, you know, like I had mentioned before. Um, so I, what you had mentioned, you, you, you kind of said, you know, your dad came here to Baltimore and one question I was going to ask, I think he came here actually in 98 and, um, I know that in he when he was in uh, Indianapolis, he had played under Ted March of Broda. Um, did he follow March of Broda here? Because a lot of coaches, like when they leave or something like that and go somewhere else, they take, you know, the, a lot of times players will follow. Was that the situation or do you know? You know what? I don't know. That's a good question. That's not something that I know right now. I could probably get the answer fairly quickly for you, mm -hmm. but um, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm oh, not okay. Sure. I, I was just curious about that because, um, you know, well, Ted March of Broad actually coached Baltimore Colts too um, in the seventies. He, the last three years they had a winning record. He took them to the playoffs three years in a row, 75, 76, and 77 which was way before your time, you know, um, right, but right. that was, um, you know, so he was a beloved coach. And when they, you know, the Browns moved here and became the Ravens, they hired him as the coach. I think they actually got rid of Bill Belichick, believe it or not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, but you know, Hey, you know, it ended up the way it ended up, you know, and um, it, did. it did. And I know that defense, they had a lot of fun together with Rex as the coach. Oh yeah. I, I've, I hear stories all the time from many of the, the former players or the players that my dad played with on that defense. And they are just one unit still, you know, they, when, when they lost my dad, you know, they were absolutely broken because he was sort of the glue of it all. But mm -hmm. um, the stories that I heard about, how they were a team, but they were truly brothers and family. It was mm -hmm. it was amazing to see the the bond that they all had, even after the Super Bowl and football. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the year after that was kind of a letdown, but you know, with you know, again, really not your dad's fault because he was out there. You know, he had another good year after that, but there were just a couple of things on the team that really seemed to kind of fall apart that next year, but. Um, and I could kind of see in an interview afterwards, your dad's disappointment in the way 2001 ended up versus 2000. Um, but I mean, that team was just absolutely, um, I remember watching that because I had tickets to most of the games and I was just, um, being a Baltimore fan, I've always learned not to get too optimistic because usually you know, the Yankees or the Steelers come in and just completely deflate our balloons. And that's just been a history of that for years and years and years. Um, and I was just like, okay, uh, I'm watching them go on. You know, they started off, uh, they were five and four. 
and I actually went down to Washington to see them play the Reds. Uh, they were the Redskins at the time, and um, then I was like, they went that stretch without scoring a touchdown, but they still kept winning, or you know, being able to uh, get by. And then I was like, okay, well, they'll be above 500. Okay. Well, they, they might make the playoffs this year. I never, I always, again, I swear, I always learned never to get too ahead of myself being a right. Baltimore fan. Wait, you know? it, and then, is it the year uh, when they won the Super Bowl? That yes, it was. Playoffs? Yes. Okay, it, okay. And then when they got into the playoffs, I was like, my God, they, I think they can do it. Um, I mean, I was just watching the numbers and the statistics, all the shutouts and keeping, you know, the scoring down and just, the absolute way they would just dominate, especially during those that last seven game winning streak that year, you know? Yeah. Yep. They put their heart and soul and everything they had into, into those games and, and Mm -hmm. that game. And it was, you know, to be able to hear the, the stories of just what they pushed through to get there was they, it goes down in history, you know, it's a special team and it will be forever. I believe. Mm-hmm. Now, were you and your siblings athletic too? Yeah, yeah, we were. Um, I, my brother was the only one of us to go play in college, and he played football at Villanova University. Oh, and, okay. Uh, yep, and so he made my dad super proud by doing that. But then um, he moved on to other things afterwards. And like I mentioned, he now runs the private aviation company. Mm-hmm. Um, with my dad's business partner. And, um, and yeah, so we didn't, we didn't make careers out of it. You know, we just sort of let, let our dad do his thing (laughs) and found our own paths in life. And the beautiful thing from that is that our dad never pushed us to do anything we didn't want to do. Sure, sure, sure. If we wanted to play, he wanted us to play, but if we didn't, that was okay with him. He just wanted us to, to be happy and, and enjoy our life. Sure, sure. And, um, and and the thing is, I mean, it's just, I mean, getting to the college level is an accomplishment in itself. I mean, there's a lot of people that just, you know, they make it to the high school level. The college level is definitely a notch up. And then, you know, professional, I mean, one out of how many even get a chance to set foot on the field right. will be able to make a career out of it, you know. And right. um, that's just amazing. You know, Villanova is a good school, too, you know, and um, I'm sure that and not only playing there, but he got a top-notch education too. That's no uh, no slouch school, I'll tell you that. He did. He's a smarty pants, our brother. <laughs> he oh, that's, is. That's wonderful. And you have a sister too, correct? Yes. Yes, I have a sister. She went to the University of South Carolina for school, mm-hmm. and uh, and she's part of all of our family endeavors. Like she works for the company. She works for Titan Aviation Group and Mm -hmm. obviously helps with goose flights as well. And um, is also finding a path of her own in life and um, in other things. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's a beautiful thing to see how our family has come together, you know, in such grief and um, adversity, like we were saying, and, you know, make the most out of it and just keep on going in honor of in honor of our dad, because we know that's exactly what he would want. Right, right. Now, did you all grow up? Did you stay in Baltimore after your father retired from football, or did you move back out of town? We did not. We moved back out of town to New Jersey. Oh, okay. He yeah, kind of went back the- home then. Yeah. Yes, we did. And we didn't go back to the home, my dad's hometown. We went to another town in New Jersey and mm-hmm. uh, just sort of made our own impression somewhere else, but we're close to, to everybody still spent all of our holidays together, still spent summers at the Jersey shore. Oh yeah. Yeah. Family, family has always been number one. Well, that that's good. And that that's good that, you know, and, and the thing is too, is that I know he was active in events and things like that for the Ravens, uh, you know, alumni and things like that down here. And you're close enough you know, it was about two or three hours sometimes to get up there at the most, you know, I go up there quite a bit. So, um, well, it, it was good, but you know, you're able to get back to your people, you know, which is a good thing. Yes. Which was yes. a good thing, you know? So, um, did you have any, um, you know, stories yourself from, you know, being around the team Did anything ever, uh, you know, funny happen? I, I know with this, I mean, those guys were a barrel of laughs, you know, um, and I know you were just a little kid at the time, but do you have any you know funny stories that you remember about being around the team or anything like that? 
Um, that's a good question. I know my dad brought me everywhere with him, mm -hmm. including the men's locker room at times. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> so what he would, he would have to open the door and yell, Samantha's coming in so that all of the guys, the guys knew, and I would go in with him for a minute, get whatever he needed and then go out. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, I was so young that I can only just now hear stories mm -hmm. from, from that time of, of the team when the team was together, but, um, you know, I don't know. I think they more so had more internal stories than me, me witnessing at everything. Sure. Sure. I mean, were you, when, when they won the Super Bowl, were you there or were you home watching? I was there. I was there oh, wow. and, um, with my mom and my mom was pregnant with my sister at the time. Oh, and okay. Yeah, and one of the first things my dad did when he when he won was come on over to the bleachers and bring me and my mom down to the field to celebrate with him. Oh, that's great. That's great. And uh, was your brother not born yet? He was born. He was sick, though. So he was Oh, here. okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Wow. I mean, that, that must have been something else. I mean, I mean, you must have been so proud of your dad during that moment. I mean, I guess you... Um, you know what? It's funny you say that because he told me, he goes, I remember him telling me this story. He grabbed me and he was like, Samantha, daddy just won the Super Bowl. What do you want to do? And I go, I want to go see Edgar Allen and Poe. <laughs> and he went to go see the birds. And it was just, he always would laugh about that and be like, you know, I just, the biggest, the biggest milestone of my career. And you wanted to see Edgar Allen and Poe, the mascots. And that's exactly where I brought you to go see Edgar Allen and Poe. Oh, wow. Well, wow. that's great. Well, that, I mean, you know, that was just, um, again, that was just phenomenal, you know, um, just, just such a legendary team. And, you know, they're talked about all the time too, whenever you see like an NFL film or, whenever they're talking about great defenses during any NFL season, those guys always come up, you know, um, definitely a special thing that they did. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And um, I know that it didn't come easy and that, you know, my dad, he worked, he worked so hard to achieve everything that he did. And I really am so proud. And um, you know, it's, I was, I was proud in a different way when I was young. So I didn't fully understand it, but mm -hmm. as I've gotten older and um, have been able to really see all that my dad's done and all that he did to get work to where he did, mm -hmm. I, I could not be more proud of him and all of the hard work that he put into it, you know, for, to make a, a beautiful life for himself with many accomplishments, but also for, you know, our family and the people around him, because he gave back to everybody. He, he sure did. did. He really did. So I am I am extremely proud to, of him and also to be his daughter. Well, you know, I can't say that I blame you. Yeah, I can't say that I blame you. And I'm I, I can see exactly my I can see exactly why. I can see exactly why with all these great things. So uh so um let me ask you this. Are there, is there a website or anywhere we can go to get more information? Yes, absolutely. So um, if you're interested in the beer, you can go to pressboxsports.com slash goose flights, and it'll, it'll show you a bunch of different ways that you can get the beer at, you know, Guilford Hall Brewery, Glory Days Grill, Costa's Inn. Um, but then if you're interested in our transportation services, or if you know somebody who could utilize our services, well, we're here to help. And you can go to gooseflights.org and um, you'll be able to submit a form on there. And then, of course, keep up with us on Instagram at gooseflights. We post a bunch of recaps of the flights that we do, the trips that we do, and the way that we're you know, continuing on our, our father's legacy through mm -hmm. Goose Flights. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, folks, um, you know, you've heard it here, you know, and um, are there things that, you know, other things that people can do to help? Yes, know, uh, yes. yes, of course, donations go a long way. Um, so if you want to donate, you can also do that on our website, gooseflights.org. There's a big need for transportation. And of course, we're growing. Mm -hmm. um, we're about a year and a half in. Um, since we've been officially established. So any any donation amount, it counts. And it counts for something really big and special. 
I'm sure that, you know, that could be really utilized nowadays, especially too, because it seems like over the last maybe five years or so, the price of fuel has been up and down like a yo-yo. And I'm sure that that's got to be a factor, a, a real challenge for you sometimes when it comes to doing all this transportation of people too, right? You know, it does, but luckily, um, so the way that Titan Aviation Group uh, mm -hmm. helps us is they do this all volunteer from all volunteering. Okay. And um, they have excellent relationships with multiple operators of the aircraft. So oh, great operators know what our mission is and they provide the, the aircrafts at a very discounted rate for us so mm -hmm. that's helpful um that's but of course you know the gas is definitely a, a big problem especially for you know people who are trying to get to to their doctor's appointments they can't afford gas themselves so mm -hmm. that's another thing that we do we come in and we we assist with the the gas the gas mm -hmm. need as well well, wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, best of luck to you with all of your future endeavors and everything. And thank you for doing such a great thing for the people. You know, um, I'm sure, you know, um, everybody out there that really needs you is grateful to all the things. And I'm sure a lot of people hearing this are glad to know that you're there now. Uh, they may not have heard of what you're doing. And I'm hopefully, you know, my listeners will, uh, maybe somebody listening to this can benefit from it someday. You never know. Absolutely. I would love that. And thank you, Michael, for, for having me and allowing me to share, share the message of, of goose flights and what we do and, you know, in continuing on our dad's legacy and just making an impact. So we, I really appreciate it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, Sammy, thank you for joining us today. Um, remember folks, uh, gooseflights.org and, uh, we will see you all next time. Thanks again for listening folks. And thank you, Sammy. Thank you. And thanks for listening tonight, folks. We appreciate you coming by for our episode with Samantha Siragusa, the daughter of the late Tony Siragusa, one of our most beloved Baltimore Ravens players, and the fine things that they are doing with gooseflights.org. Uh, their website is, again, gooseflights.org. If you are in need of those services, or if you would like to donate to help, uh, you know, please go to gooseflights.org, and uh, you'll get the information that you need for it. Um, again, a lot of fine things they're doing, and uh, Goose Flights Lager, made by Guilford Hall Brewery right in Baltimore City, um, also available at Glory Days Grill and Costas Inn. It's a great beer. I've tasted it, and it's very, very good. Uh, the Foul Players of Perryville are back in action. We have shows coming up on the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad, Fifth Company Brewing, Susky River Beverage Company, and Maryland Party Boat. Foulplayersofperryville.com is our website. Or if you're interested in booking us, foulplayersperryville at yahoo.com or 443-600-0446. Every Tuesday from 4 to 6 p.m. is the Back of the Rack, the Michael Spedden Show on 97underground.com, Baltimore's Pure Rock Worldwide. Go to 97underground.com, download the free app, listen to us wherever you go, listen anytime, anywhere. Also, remember, our interviews are archived, youtube.com slash at 97 underground michael spedden we thank you for watching and listening to foul players radio and supporting our guests in their endeavors remember foulplayersradio.com youtube.com slash at foul players radio and uh, remember to go uh, to our episodes look in the show notes and look at the links to our guests you know buy their books their albums tickets to their shows anything else you can do to support them and remember to please hit the like and subscribe button and follow us wherever you can. Give us a nice review, a nice, honest review, and uh, hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. And folks, we're signing off. We will see you all next time.